Justice Kagan. Mr. Mary, you talked, um, you relied on the uh, state's extensive powers under the Elector's Clause. You talked about uh, the, st the states having a role in uh, enacting, you know, typical ballot access provisions. Um, uh, I, I, guess, I guess, you know, it strikes me that we've put some limits on that, and I'll just give you Anderson versus Celebrezzi as an example of that, where we said, in fact, uh, states are limited in who they can take off a ballot, um, and uh, that was a case about minor party candidates. But the reason was that one state's decision to take a candidate off the ballot affects everybody else's rights. And we talked about the pervasive national interest in the selection of candidates for national office. We talked about how an individual state's decision would have an impact beyond its own borders. So if that goes for minor political party candidates, why doesn't it go a fortiori for the situation in this case? Well, certainly constitutional principles like Section 3 apply to everybody, but in Calabresi, the issue there was a First Amendment question. And certainly there's no doubt that states' exercise of their power under Article 2 is constrained by First Amendment principles. And, and, and in, in that case, the, the state law deadlines for when a minor party candidate got on the ballot just came too soon to be reactive to what major parties had done and therefore risk disenfranchising people who were disillusioned with who the major parties had picked. And it raised First Amendment problems. Here there's no real First Amendment problem and a state is just trying to enforce an existing qualification that's baked into our constitutional fabric. Yeah, I, I guess, you know, it, it did come up in the First Amendment, but there's a broader principle there, and it's a broader principle about who has power over certain things in um, our federal system. And, you know, within our federal system, states have great power over many different areas, but that there's some broader principle about that there are certain national questions um, that, that's, that's, that State where states are not the repository of authority. And I took a lot, First Amendment, not First Amendment, a lot of Anderson's reasoning is really about that. Like, what's a state doing deciding who gets to, um, uh, who, who other citizens get to vote for for president? Colorado is not deciding who other states get to vote for for president. It's deciding how to assign its own electors under its Article II power. And the Constitution grants them that broad power Well, but the power effect of that is obvious, yes? No, Your Honor, because different states can have different procedures. Some states may allow insurrectionists to be on the ballot. They may say, we're not looking past the papers. We're not going to look into federal constitutional questions. It's the sort of, the, I mean, even in this election cycle, there are, there are candidates who are on the ballot in some states, even though they're not natural born citizens, and off the ballot in other states. And that's just a function of states' power to enforce, uh, to preserve their own electors and avoid disenfranchisement of their own citizens. Thank you.